Right, today I'm going to run through NSXT integration with Terraform. Terraform is what I use inside my home lab environment to help me quickly build and destroy topologies that I use for demonstrations throughout the week. Uh, recently, some of my custom customers have been asking me how I do this because they're showing a lot of interest in infrastructure as code, especially to help them align with their application and development teams as well to create more ag agility inside the network and align with their practices. So infrastructure as code solves the very common IT infrastructure configuration and management nightmare that many of us actually have. Jumping around in the network, making configuration changes on one device, then logging into another device and making changes, all without any sort of synchronization around the state of the network. It enables operators to efficiently and effectively set up and provision a fully documented and version controlled network that's under constant source control using tools such as GitHub, without having to make those one-off configuration changes throughout the entire network. So obviously this leads to some faster deployment across all infrastructure, not just limited to NSXT, but obviously multi-vendor deployments as well. It's consistent deployment and validation and testing prior to implementation can be obviously integrated into existing developer pipelines and tool sets um, and version control and snapshotting allows the operator to roll the, the entire network state back to a good known state if required. Um, and everything is documented as you go. So when we make a configuration change using our editor, we have to apply a comment to that as well, which is synchronized with our source control. Um, and we know who made that change, why they made the change, and when they made the change to the network. So if we look at my deployment right now in my lab environment, it's very simple and vanilla. For Terraform to function with NSXT, NSXT needs to be, have some sort of minimal baseline configuration in place. Edge nodes need to be deployed, transport zones and transport nodes need to be functional. Um, and apart from that, we're ready to use Terraform. I've already built a, a GitHub repository called HomeLab, which I use here to store all my configurations and operate with them under source control. I'm going to build out a simple tier zero router design, so tier zero, which will be called Peering. So no surprise, this is the device that will be performing BGP peering functions into my lab infrastructure. So I've got a, an upstream router, which is just a simple Mikrotik running BGP. And I have two interfaces, one on VLAN 208, one on VLAN 209, that perform BGP appearing with my core infrastructure. So I run on BGP AS 65001 over here. And I'll connect a existing, uh, some tier one routers as well into this infrastructure. So tier one here, Another tier one, uh, and this will be customer A and customer B. And any network segments that I have here as well will be advertised through into my core infrastructure. If I look at my routing infrastructure here as well, I'm actually I have a ping running to my upstream NSX hosts, so 8.1 and 9.1 are the IP addresses that will be configured on my um, T0, 9.1 here, um, and I currently have two BGP neighbors ready to go as well. Um, obviously they're, they're idle as well and haven't formed BGP um, peering yet. So we'll start seeing this change as we build the infrastructure out. So apart from that, we're good to go. Um, we'll go through and start defining the basics of Terraform. I'm using Microsoft Visual Studio to help me uh, configure my configurations and then synchronize them back into GitHub. So the first thing we're going to do is define a, a new file which I'll call provider. You can place all your Terraform configurations into one file if you want um, or you can break them up into multiple files uh, depending on your requirements. So the first file here, provider, basically just outlines how Terraform communicates with my host um, and the credentials to actually gain access as well. So to save this one, I'm just going to push this back up to GitHub. So right, and let's commit this change and push it back up. I'll right, jump back into a GitHub repo and just verify we actually have got that file. Okay, here it is provider.tf. And pull it down to my host I'm using to deploy Terraform for me. Right, so the first thing we do with Terraform is we run Terraform plan 
It'll take all the Terraform files in this directory and apply them to my infrastructure. There is no changes to be made right now because the only file I've pushed into this is to define the provider um, and the host I'm talking to. So let's make some more uh, concrete changes here. I'll jump back into Visual Studio. I'll make another file here called infrastructure. And in this file, I'm going to place um, my existing configuration that's inside NSXT. So things like my edge nodes, my cluster configuration, um, my transport zones. Um, and I'll use these later on in my configurations as well. I will define a DHCP server here as well. So this DHCP server doesn't exist in my infrastructure, so it will be deployed um, when I apply this. So let's save this and let's push this back up as well. There we go, and push that back up to GitHub. Okay, and there it is, my infrastructure file is now there. Pull down. Oh, okay, let's run Terraform plan. So plan will just compare the network infrastructure right now to what my configuration plan looks like. It's telling me it's going to add this DHCP server. So let's apply this to a network. Right, tell it, yes, we want to do that. Right, great, so it's now done that. So if I jump back into my browser, have a look at NSXT under the DHCP section, I now have a new DHCP server there and ready to start allocating addresses to workloads on DHCP enabled segments. Right, let's get more into this. Let's start adding the tier zero rudder. So my tier zero rudder will be called peering. Obviously you can name these files whatever you want. Uh, let's call it this. And I'm going to add in a few things here. So I have the VLAN, the VLANs I have to configure. So my VLAN definition here, um, I'll call them peering one and peering two. You can call them whatever you want on VLAN 208 and 209. And the transport zone here is my TZ VLAN transport zone, which is a VLAN back segment. I'll then add the definition of my T0 router, which is very simple, just my T0 router, give it a name um, and the BGP AS number that I'm using for that T0. And every router needs to have some route redistribution policies in place as well to tell it what routes um, can be considered to be advertised. So I'm advertising static routes and directly connected interfaces segments from tier zeros and tier ones as well. And I'll place all these files in, on that GitHub repo and make them available for people to look at if they want to read into it a bit more. I then am defining or attaching my interfaces, peering one and peering two, to this interface. So it also attaching them to the edge nodes in my cluster. So I have diversity in my, um, my peering and configuring the IP addresses. So 8.1 and 9.1 were the, the two addresses that we were configuring and I have a, a ping running for in the background as well. And finally, let's establish some BGP here as well. So I've got my two BGP neighbors. Play that up. Peer one and peer two. Upstream devices were 8.254 and 9.254 and eBGP, so we've got separate or uh, different ASs, 65,000. Right, and we'll save this change. So we can now deploy this back into our infrastructure. And let's push this up and I'm going to pull this back down to my host I'm using to make configuration changes with Terraform. Okay, this time we'll run Terraform plan again. There'll be quite a few changes that it's going to push into the network. Okay, so everything with an addition sign next to it means we're adding this to the network. Obviously, if there was a, a minus sign, we're removing that. Right, so let's jump back into our browser. Have a look at our topology. Okay, so we're, we now have this new peering router has appeared. I have some segments. We configured as well. Okay, great. And it should be working on the BGP peering as well. So my interfaces have been attached here as well. 
Right. Jump back in the radar and see if those pings are working. Oh, the pings have started responding as well, so the interfaces have been attached to the T0, um, mapped to the correct VLAN. That's great, um, and responding to ping. Also got one BGP neighbor up as well. So the other one will come along. Have to wait for BGP to do its thing. Right, so look at our topology again. Okay. We can also come into the tier zero here and click on this icon to show us the topology we just defined as well. So a single tier zero with two interfaces upstream as well. So it's starting to match the diagram we built prior as well. Great. Let's define our two customers as well. Back into Visual Studio. So again, I'm going to set, make these or we'll define these as separate files as well. So customer A. So this could be my definition for everything that customer A has. Right. It's called customer A. It's advertising static routes and connected interfaces as well as other options, but these are the two most common ones. Um, the DHCP server I defined initially is also attached to this um, this distributed router as well. And I'm building a customer segment a segment here as well, which will be um, using 10.100.0.1 as the subnet. I'm sorry, dot one is the gateway address, and 10.100.0.0 is the subnet. And 24 bit mask, and then um, some addresses for DHCP as well. All right, let's push this one up now. Okay, made that change, jump back to our terminal. Oop, did I not push that up properly? Oh. Getting ahead of myself. Right, so I now have this here as well. Okay, so let's run our Terraform plan again. Right, so we're going to add this new customer. You can see there's a whole bunch of other things here I could have actually configured. Um, but if we leave them alone, um, the defaults will be applied there as well. So let's jump back into our browser here. And we now have customer A. So click on this icon here for topology, we show how things are linked up. So great. And we have customer A segment here as well. So just notice back on our router here as well, both BGP sessions have established. Um, we can jump on that router as well. Um, So 10, 100. Okay, we're receiving that route twice from both um, BGP addresses as well. Right, let's add customer B. Again, exactly the same as what we had before. Jump into Visual Studio. Obviously, you can use whatever editor you want to maintain your, your source files. Customer B, let's call it this time. Oh, yeah, and this one is pretty much the same. Customer B, 10200, 1.0 slash 24, and different address range for our DHCP. All right, let's apply this one. All right, let me push this back up. So we notice we don't have that 10200. No. Okay, great. Shouldn't be there yet. We haven't applied that. Oh no. It's going to work.
Oh yeah, let's refresh our gateways here. Now customer B, right. And customer B has a segment attached to it. What we could do is actually just go and check vSphere as well. Okay, customer A and customer B have also appeared over here. We push those automatically into um, into vSphere for workload operators to start attaching their, um, their VMs to. Let's have a look at our writing table. On our router. Not that one. Okay, 10, 200 now. So received from both BGP peers as well. Right, so as you can see, we've gone through and we've, we've made these changes. We've built out our entire infrastructure using uh, code snippets and Terraform plan files. Um, you can have these all lumped in one big file. You can have your customers in one file definition if you want. You can have security isolated into its own uh, plan as well. Um, obviously, you could use whatever restrictions you want in place to ensure that some users can configure some files and not others. Um, we can make configuration changes as well. So say we want to um, you know, rename this customer. Um, we can come to customer B here. Um, we'll call him customer, uh, customer C. Um, we've got the right customer C. Segment. Like so. Obviously, we should just use search and replace. Might be a bit quicker. I can save this change now. I'll push this back into the network. And there, and I'll push this change back up. So this will get pushed up into GitHub as well, and we've got version control, so we can see the differences between different versions of code as well. Jump back onto here. Right, so you can see now we've actually got you know, the files got some addition, additions and changes. Uh, on, let's see what happens if we run a plan against this. Right, so some changes to be made. So, right, okay, let's on, apply this one. I'll jump back into our GUI here as well. Okay, we've still got T0, tier one here. Okay, this one's been swapped around. Give it a second that I'll age out. So we now have customer A and customer C. Topology is still intact. We'll move those segments across, rename them as well. Routes are still being advertised. Right, there we go. Let's remove the old one. So customer A is now customer C. Let's have a look at um, our source control for this as well. To refresh this. Okay, customer A. Still called customer A as a file, but not the demo. Okay, let's look at the changes. Well, I was looking at the wrong one. So here's our comment, renamed customer. Do a comparison between the two. So customer B became customer C. So if we want to, we could we could roll back to this specific version um, of the file, of the configuration for the network if we needed to. So you may not use GitHub for production, but it's great for doing demos in. And there's plenty of ways to skin this um, approach as well. So that's it for me in my NSX and Terraform demo. Um, as always, you can reach out to me um, directly on my email if you want to. So fprouse at vmware.com. We've had some great feedback from people about some of my other videos. Um, if you want to reach out to me on Twitter, then F plus. So thanks very much for paying attention to this. And if you've got any questions around NSXT and Terraform in your network, please let me or one of my colleagues at VMware know. Thanks. Bye.